Now, one of the main reasons to get a sound card back in the 80s, 90s, and even the zeros was the added frames per second. But now it's 2021, and does that rule still apply? Let's find out in this video. Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now, today we're going to talk about frames per second because I have read some articles and even had some people commenting in the comment section below saying that they had some added FPS when adding a sound card. Now, that all sounds a bit weird to me because in my understanding, sound gets created by the CPU. It will be then converted by the digital to analog converter, being an external, internal, or maybe your codec, and then you will be able to hear it. So sound cards don't do the thing that they used to do is creating the sound and thereby offloading the CPU. But I wanted to find out. So I asked myself four different questions and these questions are, first one, does ecran still give you additional frames per second? Is there a difference in the APIs used? Thirdly, does an external USB sound card uh, also have a performance hit? And of course, well, does a sound card give you extra frames per second? Now, there are several reasons why I chose these questions. So let's dive a bit deeper. Now, in my last video, I reviewed yet another XY sound card, which also has, like all XY sound cards, XRAM on board. Now, XRAM is nothing more than DDR memory running at 100 MHz, but because it's double data, it can transfer data like it's 200 MHz. The idea behind XRAM is that the CPU isn't bothered by decompressing sound and transferring it to the sound card when needed. No, sound is transferred to the sound card when the game is loaded and then decompressed by the sound card itself and placed in the XRAM until it is needed. But as it turns out, DDR memory is really slow and we've already started using DDR4, which is extremely fast when you even when you compare it to DDR. Also, games had to have direct access to the hardware itself and be written in specifically to make use of XRAM. But since Vista killed off sound card drivers, direct access isn't possible anymore, and so any potential use of XRAM is gone. Still, I wanted to find out if the card itself with XRAM would show a significant increase or decrease in frames per second. Now, as for the second question, now I have shown in another video some time ago, switching from DirectX to Vulkan in Ghost Recon Breakpoint gave an increase in frames per second and making the game even more stable. So I was wondering if there is any performance to be gotten there. Now for the third question, as some of you may already know, I'm not a huge fan of USB sound cards or DACs or digital to analog converters as some people refer to them. In my opinion, the signal has to be converted to a USB signal and then back again. And with all these conversions, there has to be a drop in audio quality. Now that is something personal because there's no way I can prove or disprove this theory. I can only test if there's a difference in frames per second when using a USB sound card. And that's what I did. And well, the fourth, of course, the big one. Does using a sound card give you more FPS or not? That's just the whole damn point of this video. So which sound cards did I use? Well, I could have used a lot of sound cards. I mean, I have over 30 different sound cards and external sound cards. But I chose a couple of ones that were in the shops, not too expensive, but just a, well, middle section of sound cards. So I chose also no sound because I wanted to measure the effect with having absolutely no audio device present. No onboard sound, no sound card, no video card sound. Of course, also a motherboard solution or a codec. And this time in the form of the Realtek ALC892 because this one is more or less the default onboard sound solution on motherboards these days. Of course, there are other solutions like the ALC 1200 and all the other variations, but they're just basically the same. They code and decode 
hence the name codec. The vast majority of gamers will have this onboard codec, so this will be the baseline for all the other tests. I chose the Sennheiser EPOS GSX300 because it's a great, not too expensive external sound card that also has a mic in, and thus perfect for the gamer. Then the Asus Xoner AE because it's a relatively cheap card with excellent components. It is the card that I recommend the most on my channel, so I was wondering what kind of influence this one has. Now for the card with the XRAM I chose the X5 Titanium Champion. Now I was going to use the Titanium HD version of this card, just because it's the best X5 in the whole lineup of X5s. But after I finished the review about that card some time ago, the card just stopped working. Of course, I also have the Champion sound card for my last video and that one is the one I used. And for the last one I used the Creative AE5 because it's a bit of a higher end sound card with very good quality components and excellent sounds. So which benchmark did you use? Now first off I used the Division 2 because that has either DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. Now I did a video in the past about this because I wanted to know which one I should use. Second benchmark that I wanted to use is World War Z because that has either DirectX 11 and Vulkan. So it's a nice way to compare those two. Thirdly, I wanted to use Shadow of the Tomb Raider because that is a very well constructed game with excellent sound and it also has one of the longest benchmarks. It affects its three different segments and it takes the longest time to run. Uh, but that is also that the results were very consistent and a lot better to use. Now for the fourth benchmark, now I didn't want to use only Ubisoft games, but they tend to have good benchmarking software. Uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, I have done a video about that one a long time ago, also comparing uh, either, uh, what was it, DirectX 11 or DirectX 12, can't remember exactly, and Vulcan, because Vulcan kicks major FPS beat. <laughs> now it took me a couple of days to run all these benchmarks, and, but after running more and more bench benchmarks, a pattern slowly started to emerge. So let's start answering those questions. Starting with the first one. Does using an X5 card with XRAM still give you additional frames per second? Well, there is a slight increase in frames per second, but it's only 0.74% overall improvement. It's not a lot, but it is there. Now, the biggest increase was in World War Z, using Vulcan with 1.92% which comes down to a, well, average 3,4 frames per second. Now, I asked this question in the beginning to find out if XRAM actually does anything. I doubt that this increase is because of XRAM being used at all. It isn't such a huge increase as Creative promoted. And also, from what I know, XRAM just cannot be addressed at all anymore, and that Windows doesn't even have knowledge that the ROM is present on the sound card, and even how to use it. So this slight increase is just the sound card offloading the CPU somewhat of its sound producing tasks. And now for the second question, is there a difference in the API used? Well, I thought that DirectX 11 could benefit more from a sound card, as DirectX 11 relies more on the CPU for parallel tasks. In DirectX, 12 or Vulkan, these tasks are handed over to the far video card, which is far better equipped to handle that. But the results are something else. In Tomb Raider, there is an increase, although very tiny, of 0.10%. In the Division, DirectX 12 is better than DirectX 11, here with a difference of 0.96%. In World War Z, Vulkan is better than DirectX 11, with an improvement of 1.27%. In Ghost Recon Breakpoint, DirectX 12 is better than Vulcan with a minuscule tiny 0.09%. And now for the third question, does using an external USB sound card or digital to analog convert have an impact on gaming performance? Now overall, the Sennheiser EPOS GSX300 shows a drop in frames per second with an average of 0.37. This is a drop, but again, a very marginal decrease. So the USB conversion isn't that straining on the performance of games. 
So the answer to my question is, well, not really. What is interesting to see are the results from the Xonar AE, a sound card that I have been promoting for such a long time. It is my go-to card when recommending a sound card. It's affordable, well-built, nice driver interface, good quality components. It's the card that started this whole channel. So what's not to like? The results tell us a different story. It's the biggest decrease in frames per second overall with minus 30%. That is two frames per second. There's even a whopper of 3,09% in the Division 2 DirectX 11. Now, these results are confirming something that I, have, that I have been suspecting for a very long time. And that is that the Xonar AE is in fact, wait for it, internal USB sound card. <gasps> now I have noticed that all USB sound cards show a decrease. Internal cards show an increase in FPS. And when looking at the data sheet from C Media, it clearly states the CM6632A is a USB 2.0 high speed audio processor that supports the latest USB audio device class version 2. And for the fourth question, does a sound card give you extra frames per second? Now, if you look at the overall results, the Sound Blaster X AE5 does give you an overall performance increase of 1,23%. It's not a lot, but there is an overall increase in performance. In one instance, when benchmarking for World War Z in with Vulcan, there was even an increase in of 3,27%, which boils down to 6,7 frames per second. Now, this confirms the viewer who said he had an increase of 5 frames per second in a game. So, the conclusion is that, well, a sound card may add a couple of frames per second, but the increase and when you're looking at 100 plus frames per second is maybe five or six, maybe seven frames per second, which just isn't a lot. Now, if it's enough to warrant a sound card for you to buy, well, I'm not sure it's all up to you, it's your money. It was to me, well, I wouldn't. I would just stick to the onboard sound solution. If you want to have better sound with better fidelity, better placement of audio sources, if you want to have uh, reverb uh, more, or 7.1 simulation, if you want to have that higher crisper ear sound, if you want to have higher definition of sound, if you want to use 24 bits or even 32 bits at higher sampling rates, then always get a sound card because it will always be the onboard solution. So what is my conclusion? Does a sound card increase frames per second? Well, the answer is yes, it does, but the downside is not by a lot. So thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I'd hope to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.